We're continuing now with the uh, recording of the history of the Kettlewell Frictionless Mouthpiece Slider. This is a stock instrument. The slider sits on top and moves without friction to various note hole positions and is totally airtight. The lips rest upon the slider. And it's a relaxed embouchure with the one hole. But you don't use saliva anymore to lubricate, which doesn't work very well because the saliva dries when you're nervous and you're on TV or it's just not really a good method of moving to a new uh, note hole position. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the actual build out of the design that worked, which is this. And I invented it, designed it, and I built it. And you can see it has a shape at the bottom, which fits on the harp absolutely perfectly, and it is totally airtight. So if we go back in time to the thoughts that were going through my head at the time. I knew that a slider could move back and forth on an instrument, but this is what I had, which was a chunk of lucite. And the question became, you know, how, how do I shape the underside of this to fit this? You can measure it, you could cast it in some compound. But what came to my mind was that if I was an ancient Egyptian or from centuries ago, I would just use this. The instrument upon which the slider would actually move. By definition, it would fit because it's the instrument that's going to be Certain thoughts were predicates. Number one was that it was flat on the top from factory and that the sides were uniformly the same too. And they were, although they're not identical harp to harp of the same model from the same manufacturer. But on this harp, this is uniform and this is uniform. It must have to do with the way that it's shaped. So, so I thought, okay, I'll use, I'll use like, um, the harp itself is a physical template. But I knew I'd be sanding, and I figured, well, how could I do it? I could put sandpaper over this, and then sh 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 sh, or I could grind this out with a Dremel tool to get it started and then do the sanding. But the harp would be ruined. It would have goop in it. And then I thought, well, uh, well wait a second. How about removing the slide and then just putting packing tape, clear shipping tape? It comes in a roll. And then put tape around the rest of it that would be like blue tape that you do painting with in a room. Seal it up. I can sand all I want. Harp will be perfectly clean. And that's what I did. That's what I did. So I covered it with clear tape. You can use scotch tape if you use several pieces because you have to protect everything. You don't want to have the metal finish exposed to the sanding compounds and make a mess and scratch it. So, you know, you got to cover it. But packing tape's about that wide, so it would come down to the sides, and I'd bring it over the side a little bit, flip it down, press it, touch it, then wrap the rest in the bottom with painter's tape. And got some gloves and laid it on a bench and uh, ground with a Dremel, a shape that was kind of close. Started with a very rough 60 grit, went up to 100, 200, 300, 500, 800, 1,000, until it was so smooth, it was like glass on that bottom. Absolutely like glass. 
Then I pulled all the tape off and I put the thinnest, finest sandpaper I had on top of the heart. And I ran the slider several times to give it that final perfect perfection shape, the closest possible to what the harmonica is. And the result of that method was a friction-free, absolutely perfectly fit slider that has no moving parts other than the one. I mean, it, it's one piece of thing and it, uh, it's very durable. You, you can drop it and it doesn't make any difference. It was also a wonderful design in that you can use the harp as a conventional harp. You just simply set it on top. You didn't have to alter the harp in any way. A player could choose conventional slider. I've always considered it an ancient solution, but I have also considered it a highly effective solution. I don't think it would have been done too differently back in ancient Egypt. If you wanted a top of a clay jar to fit, you'd get some wet sand that was fine and just work them into each other, clean them, and there's your nice sealed pot. Um, it's an old idea, but you know, that's how they're made now. Never was mechanized. No machines, really. I mean, the only machine I use, actually, is the Dremel to start the grind. And then I do, I do go ahead and uh, use a, a bench grinder to, to shape the top of the slider. And um, you just saw what happens to them. I drop them. Everyone who plays them, I'm sure, drops them sometimes. That's why I call them cool ice. They're like trying to hold onto an ice cube. I don't know why I drop them. I drop them when I play sometimes, too, but that's okay. So they're on the ground. I'll pick it up and put it back on. But um, that's a good thing, I guess, because it doesn't have any friction. So it just... Do you ever held onto wet ice? I think you got the idea.